My name is Barry with InsulationMachines.net. One of the things we enjoy doing is not only selling the machines, but providing technical support even on site. Today we are in Atlanta, Georgia, helping a gentleman with his machine. We're going to tear down and maintain a CM1500 HP, as well as changing out the airlock seals. Okay, before we dive into actually tearing apart the machine, let's talk about some things you will need. We use a chain lubricant, and make sure it is a chain lubricant. It will repel dust. Also, you will need some multi-purpose synthetic grease and silicone. We like to make sure it's 100% silicone and clear is a good color to use. Before we begin, let's uh, spray the machine off and clean it up as much as possible to remove all the cellulose. On the machine are three filters. These filters uh, are very important to keep clean, so we're going to use uh, compressed air and we're going to uh, spray these filters clean, making sure that uh, we keep all the dust out of the blower box. Dust will kill your blowers. Okay, after removing four screws in the front, we're going to, once again, we're going to uh, blast down the chain and the sprockets in the front area of the machine. The lubricant that uh, was sprayed on it, again, we're going to use the chain lubricant, so we're going to spray this on the machine and lubricate it, generously uh, following the chains all the way around. On this machine are four bearings with Zerk fittings. I like to use this quick release Zerk fitting because if you've used these guns before, you can know that uh, these things are difficult to pop onto the Zerks as well as uh, taking them back off. So this is a quick release clamp that I purchased. Just attach it that simply and then pump the grease in. You're only going to need to pump enough grease in so that you end up seeing just a little bit of grease bleed out from the top here. Now we're going to release the hopper. I don't recommend using a lot of power tools on these, but for releasing bolts and everything, uh, power tools are very helpful. So you don't have to take the nuts all the way off. After releasing the hopper, we're going to go in and we're going to vacuum out all the silos, making sure that we have an environment that's clean to work in. And that is the airlock that we're vacuuming out right now. Now these little wipers are what we call auger wipers, and you will have 10 of them in your machine when you purchase it, and they are replaceable. Now we're going to undo the chain in the front so that we can remove the one auger. We're only going to remove the one auger on the right hand side which will require a 9 16 inch wrench and I like to use an extension and get in there with the 9 16 on the other side that way you can bypass the uh, little augers there that are in the uh, air, above the airlock. And you're going to release four of these bolts, two on each side. You'll notice my little magnetic tray, I highly recommend having a magnetic tray so that you don't lose bolts. I like to use my uh, Milwaukee uh, 12 volt makes life a lot easier, faster. Now you'll notice that the, there's a flange that fits on the outside of this box with the auger assembly. So when we put this back together we'll note this once again but uh, make sure that uh, when you pull that out that those uh, flanges fit back in. Now there is our exposed airlock and we're going to just vacuum out just a little bit more to make it clean. We're going to use a half inch wrench as well as a half inch socket and uh, go in there and 
just remove all six bolts. Actually on this there are five bolts. Once we remove those bolts, we're going to remove that top plate and place that on top of the new airlock. Now notice there's a little curvature end at each end of this plate. Make sure that that is sticking up and not down into the seal. And then we're going to put all five bolts back into the plate and the new seal. This will help keep it together as a combined unit when we're placing it back into the machine. Now to put this back into the airlock, because it is a new seal and new seals are rigid and they're going to fight against you a little bit, I always like to tilt it and work from one end to the other and get the first bolt into place. So you can see here how I'm putting a little bit of pressure on that seal to bend it and I am getting that first bolt into that plate all set. I'm not going to worry about the other bolts right now. What we're going to do is we're going to tighten this first bolt down, hand tighten, so we don't lose the placement. And then work the rest of the bolts into the plate through the seal. And then on the other end, I'm going to put another nut on that bolt to hold the other end. And from here on out, it's just simply um, putting the nuts on the rest of the bolts and then we're going to tighten them down. One of the things you want to be careful with, especially using power tools, is not to tighten this so much that you end up warping the seal. As you can notice, there's a little bit of curvature. We fix that. We straighten that out. Now we're adding that silicone right up there along the side of that plate. That metal plate and that seal that will help uh, produce a little bit more sealant in there to produce higher PSIs. Just a couple of little lines there. Now again, now we're replacing the auger after we replaced all six seals and notice how those sleeves end up going on the outside of the frame of the bottom. And that is how that it's done properly. Now it's just a matter of uh, putting the bolts back in and notice that uh, the bolt will come back through this side and you're going to use a lock washer as well as a nut on the outside. So we're putting the lock washer on right now. And the nut. Of course this video is only going to show me hand tightening them. Uh, it will require you to tighten them with a wrench. Now, replacing our chain, move the um, tensioner bolt sprocket all the way back and then you should be able to uh, loop that chain right back over and get that auger chain. Sometimes it's a little stiff to work with. These chains are uh, motorcycle chains so they are larger and they will last a long time. Rustling with that just a touch and after you get the chain back on take move that tensioner over now I like to use a screwdriver to push that sprocket in uh, You you don't need to have a whole lot of tension here. All you just uh, put that screwdriver into uh, That sprocket to push it in and uh, then we're going to tighten that down with the socket Of course you can see this is live time here. I didn't edit this portion out And that is a 5 8 socket. Now you'll notice that the tension there is fine. That's perfect. Now to put the top back on, you rotate from the back to the forward position. And that's the easiest way. And then just uh, uh, take the J-bolts and secure your hopper down. This is Barry with InsulationMachines.net. Not only do we offer equipment sales, we offer technical support and on-site training. Contact us today if you need our help.